What's up guys, it's Jeff. Today I wanted to show you this device here from LG, the LG V60 ThinQ 5G. Super long name, or you could say V60 for short. Anyways, besides their super long naming scheme, this is LG's new flagship device for 2020. And since LG always delivers some really impressive hardware specs, let's check out what's new. So the tech specs, the V60 comes with the new Android 10 experience running on the new Snapdragon 865. And that is of course paired with eight gigs of RAM on board, which isn't the best, but still a decent amount. Even though eight gigs of RAM isn't all too impressive, between the amount of RAM that you have and the Snapdragon 865, you're still getting a really solid UI experience here. And I honestly don't think that you'll notice any difference with that lower RAM capacity. Past that, you have a new 6.8 inch OLED display, which still has the in-display fingerprint sensor that we saw on the GAX. And literally just before shooting this video, LG pushed an update, which actually sped up the fingerprint reader. So I guess I don't need to talk about that awful fingerprint reader experience I was having before. Now, one thing that LG can't fix via a software update is the lack of a 120 Hertz display. And it's honestly really surprising that LG left that out, but yeah, there is no 120 Hertz display on the V60, which is a feature literally everyone else is putting on their phones, except for Apple, but that's Apple. So LG sort of missed the boat on this one. Now, past that new display, you still have the same 128 gigabytes of internal memory that we saw before. And that is of course expandable up to two terabytes via micro SD card. Now it looks like LG still refuses to kill that headphone jack. So you still have the 32 bit hi-fi DAC on board for those who still love the jack and want to wire up some headphones and get some good quality audio. Of course, we still have fast charging via the trusty USB-C port on the bottom of this V60. And let's not forget, you still have wireless charging just in case you want to ditch the cables and keep things wire free. Now, moving on to the design, it looks like we have a very similar design to what we've seen before from LG. And as far as button placement goes, nothing has really changed there either. You still have the dedicated Google Assistant key on the left, along with the volume up and down buttons. And then to the right, you have that single power button. The V60 also comes with an IP68 dust and water resistance rating, Gorilla Glass 5 on the front of the device and Gorilla Glass 6 on the backside. Oh, and for those of you who are more on the clumsy side, the V60 is now marketed as being shock resistant. So that might come in handy if you are not a big fan of using a case. Now there are some pretty substantial upgrades to the V60, which in my opinion are the main reasons why you should consider buying it. The V60 ships with a 5,000 milliamp hour battery and that will get you just about two full days of moderate use on one single charge. If you are a heavy user, you'll still be seeing around 24 to 30 hours of use, which to me is still pretty darn impressive. The V60 also ships with the new 5G connection type. So if you live in an area with 5G coverage, you can take advantage of that. You also have two other new connection types in Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.1 capabilities. So as far as connection types go, this phone definitely has the latest and greatest. Oh, and let's not forget the biggest new feature about the V60 is this awesome looking new camera setup. We are now seeing a new triple camera design on the back featuring a 64 megapixel standard zoom lens, a 13 megapixel wide angle lens, and lastly a time of flight Z cam lens, which will handle better AR experiences and also get you some better looking rear camera portraits. On the front side, you have quite a pedestrian 10 megapixel front facing camera. It's definitely nothing to write home about, but it will get you some good quality selfies. Now back to those rear cameras, a 64 megapixel camera is going to give you some pretty darn good photos. And in using this camera for the past few days, this new camera setup is clearly a substantial upgrade over what we were seeing before. Now with the V60, you're not seeing some crazy zoom features like you're seeing on other devices that have recently been released, but LG is keeping it real here by giving you features that you can actually use, not just features that are honestly kind of gimmicky. Another thing I noticed was it looks like LG is making strides in regards to their color signs in photos. So the photos coming out of the V60 have a little bit more detail to them and do stand up quite nicely to the iPhone 11 Pro Max, which of course has the best color science out there. That's something Apple does really, really well. What's really cool about these cameras though is the new video features. The V60 can now record up to 8K video, but like the Galaxy S20, there doesn't seem to be any IS when shooting in this format. So you're going to have some pretty shaky 8K footage if you decide to go handheld. 
So that's quite an impressive upgrade for the V60, but just keep in mind that 8K does take up a lot of space. So you might want to get those expandable micro SD cards if you plan on using the 8K format for video. Now, with that being said, obviously you can't see 8K quality on YouTube yet, and neither can you on the LG V60 either. But if you have an 8K TV, you can view the files there, or you can scale it down to 4K and get a really solid image, but do keep in mind it's not stabilized, so you might as well just shoot in 4K anyway. 8K is just one of those things for the future. As for other formats, we still see solid 4K footage quality from LG, but what's really cool is the new Steadicam feature when shooting in 1080p. It gives you some super smooth stabilized shots that are pretty much gimbal quality, so the fact that they could package that feature into the V60 is really impressive. You still have LG's ASMR microphones inside, so that's a huge plus, and you still have LG's video portrait feature, which uses AI and video mode to blur out the background around a subject when shooting. So with all that being said, I'd say all in all, you're getting a pretty well-rounded photo and video experience with the V60. I honestly couldn't think of many more features that they could have added here. Maybe in the future, IS with 8K would be cool, but for now, I'd say this is a really good place to be. Now, I skimmed past the V60's new display earlier, and I just wanted to say, this new screen is a huge upgrade for the V60. It's a bigger 6.8-inch OLED display, now featuring cinematic full-vision display, which according to LG Quote, gives you better color and contrast quality when you're viewing your favorite videos and photos on your smartphone. Now, to me, the cinematic full vision feature is almost unnoticeable, but LG still has one thing going for them with their display. It's one of the best I've seen. The V60 has an amazing display with really true to life colors and screen brightness is also something they've done really well here too. To me, LG's new display is actually way better than the S20 Ultra display and the iPhone 11 Pro Max display, and those are two phones which traditionally have really excellent displays. Now, one thing that they haven't gotten rid of here is the notch at the top. It's still there, but as far as notches go, it's not the worst, and for the most part, I don't really notice it. So those are the major talking points when it comes to the LG V60. The new camera upgrades, a faster Android 10 experience through the Snapdragon 865, and the slight redesign of the display are all things you can appreciate, but that's not it. The V60 can access that dual display experience that we saw on the GAX, now with a completely new second display and an even better UI experience. Now, the V60 display and the secondary dual screen display are exactly the same. So that's why you're still seeing the notch at the top of the dual screen display. But honestly, I think LG has some improvement to make here with that dual screen. The main problem that I'm having with the second display is the touch sensor. So it doesn't really sense when I'm touching the display and it's sort of laggy. So hopefully this is something they can fix via a software update in the near future. Now, one thing that's super confusing is the dual screen is bundled with the phone if you buy it through AT&T or Verizon, but you are paying that extra cost for it. So you'll be paying like nine, $950. If you buy the phone through T-Mobile though, you can buy the phone just by itself for $800. So honestly, in my opinion, I'd rather save the cash on the dual screen and just get the phone separately. But if it comes to bundling it through your carrier, you might as well just put it to good use. It's not completely unusable. So that's the LG V60 ThinQ 5G. You're still getting a really premium phone here with a super awesome new camera, a really good display, and some handy hardware upgrades that improve the overall Android 10 experience. But on the other hand, you still have to deal with the facts here. There's still no 120 hertz display, nothing really setting the V60 miles apart from the competition, and there are still a few desired features that LG should have added to this device. In my opinion though, despite those flaws and missing features, I do still think that the V60 is an excellent upgrade over what we've seen from them in the past and is most certainly a flagship contender here in 2020. For $800 to $900, this is still a really good upgrade over the competition which typically starts off at like $1,200. So let's just say for 2020, so far, it's the budget premium smartphone with really solid specs at a reasonable price. 
Anyways guys, thank you for watching today's video on the LG V60. Let me know in the comment section down below what your thoughts are on this device. I'd love to see what you're thinking about LG's latest and greatest here. Of course, if you liked today's video, definitely hit that like button, get subscribed if you want to see more content in the near future, and hit that bell button to get updates when that future content is released. Anyways, thank you again for watching, and until next time, I hope you all have an awesome day.